Good morning. Today we're going to talk about the PowerShell plugin from Plugins for Lab Tech. Let's open up our screen here. As you can see here, uh, here's our, our lab. Uh, inside here, we'll select our free plugins if we go to pluginsforlabtech.com's main website. Uh, and you, can, you should be able to find, scroll through here and find our PowerShell plugin. It's a free plugin. There it is right there. Read more. And that's what it is, basically. Download it. Save it. We're going to open it. Go ahead and extract it to the desktop. Awesome. All right, now that we have it on our desktop here, we'll put it right there. Open it up. Uh, we get a little window here. There we go. Excellent. So you guys can see that. We're going to need to first, before we do anything, with trying to install a, uh, a DLL, uh, latest versions of Lab Tech, uh, look at the security of a DLL. So they need to go in and make sure that we have it unlocked. Anytime you download a DLL from the Internet, there's a chance that this is going to get locked. So to unblock or unlock it, Depending on what kind of OS you're running, you'll either have a button here to just push, or you'll have this checkbox. And my particular OS, I'm mean, running 10. Uh, it's unblocked. It's a checkbox. So we'll hit unblock and apply. That removes it, so it's gone here. Once you do that, you should uh, really shut down your console here uh, and reopen it if you have tried to install it prior to that and have gotten the error. Uh, during it because at that point it's already locked in and it won't really see it It's a good thing to do is shut down your brow uh, console reopen your console and retry adding it But since we haven't actually added it We're going to go into our plugin manager and um, In our plugin manager we'd go to advanced manage plugins add plugin Go to our PowerShell select our DLL and hit open Seeing that we have already have the PowerShell plugin installed here, there it is right there. It's coming up and saying ah, that we already see the plugin. You want to update it versus up and install it. In our case, we're already at the latest version, um, so we shouldn't have any problems there. Um, so we'll say no. All right. Excellent. Uh, otherwise, you've got a little pop-up window that allow you to go ahead and install it. Once it's installed, it'd come up with a little red X here. You'll need to right mouse click on it and make sure that you enable that plugin before you go to use it. Once you've enabled the plugin and it turns to a green check mark, you'll notice it won't be this bold black, but it'll be just regular text. You're going to need to load, reload the DB agent to complete the overall install. So. Come here, select Read Load DB Agent. That'll complete the DB Agent reload. Once that's done, you need to shut down your consoles. Get rid of that. We're done with that. We can put that in the trash now. Uh, let's go down here and relaunch our console. Give that a second to load. Excellent. There we go. And we should now have a PowerShell manager listed here, as well as at each computer console, there should be a PowerShell tab now available to you there. So first thing we want to do is open up our manager. Now, keep in mind, I've previously installed this version, so I've already started playing with it. Uh, I've added a, uh, a command. You come in here and create a friendly name, test. And maybe it's uh, get, uh, maybe it's get, uh, get member, right? And save that. It's now in here as an available command for you to uh, uh, use at any of the local computer consoles. And what, what, the reason we do this is it allows a, uh, a PowerShell admin, the ability to go in and create custom commands and command sets 
uh, for uh, for to be used against computers that maybe the lower end techs don't have that skill set to do, but then they're available then to the lower end skill set technicians to use. So it's a great way to create a library of PowerShell commands that uh, you would either use regularly that you don't want to type in yourself constantly, or uh, that your lower end text maybe you would use regularly if they just had them available to them and didn't have to pull them up from memory or go searching for them. So making them available globally across your lab tech system here by being able to create uh, just simple commands uh, uh, sets for lab tech, or for uh, PowerShell. Uh, to remove them, double click it, it reloads it back in here and hit delete and that will take it out of the system. If you want to edit it, just re double click it, it reloads it. You'll notice here I'm using a lot of single ticks versus double tick. Uh, that's because we found that we get problems and you would want to double, you'd want to escape your double, your double quote. So anytime you want to pass down a double quote, make sure you do double, double quotes there to escape it. Otherwise, use single quotes. Usually takes care of any problems that we have where we're having to encapsulate uh, a, a particular group of information and in, in set of quotes. So here we go. You see here, here's a basically list 80 users command that I have. I've saved it. Uh, don't need to edit it. Uh, we also have scripts. We can do the same thing with scripts. We can create a friendly name and then create a whole PowerShell script uh, and save it in here. Same thing applies with the single quote and double quotes. Uh, here you can see I've created a quick script that just goes out and downloads. C Cleaner from Pureform. Uh, it is a full script. It has a function in it that does down file downloads. So you can see that. And then down at the bottom, I just call my function with my variables. Now we do have the ability to pass variables to scripts, so that if you wanted to add variables into scripts, that you would be passed at the time that they are run. You can do that as well here. Um, put those variables in, the params in, uh, uh, as needed, and then uh, we have the ability to run parameters during the, during the execution of those. Same thing applies, save and delete. Uh, for this, it creates your list of scripts that are going to be available to you. Now, let's go ahead and close this down. Let's go run one of those. Since it was an Active Directory uh, uh, command set that I had there, let's go to my Active Directory server. Double click that, there it goes, it pops up in here, here we go, and you'll now see we have a PowerShell tab. In that PowerShell tab, we have a list over here, here's our PowerShell commands list, and there's my AD users command, so I can select that. It loads it down here, so I can make changes to it one time, so maybe this script is for a different uh, domain, and so I maybe I want to change the domain. So I could easily do that here before I execute it. But I have that script here now, so I can or that 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 command uh, PowerShell command. So I can now execute it, and it will go off and execute that command against this machine. And since it's an Active Directory server, I should get a return. And let's take a look here and see what happens as it spits back to me. Uh, information about our Active Directory. And there we go. We get Active Directory user list. There we go. Looks like Peter Cottontail here uh, is a user, and here's all his information. He's in this particular domain group uh, uh, container. So if you want to be a little, or sorry, he looks like he is in uh, this container here. Yeah, there's the container that he's in. So he is in that container. So we pulled, we basically here dumped everything from the entire domain group, but we could specify just the container if we wanted to by adding in a CN dash, a CN equals users comma in this area as well. And that way we could just get anybody that was in the users OU group. Um, so uh, that's running in the command. Uh, we can also clear this out and just do a, our own command. And it will just execute our own command. So we can at any time run our own command. If we have one we want to run, it doesn't have to be in the list over here for us to run it. Uh, so we can run any command we want at any time. That's, this is just an easy way for us to remember 
extensive long commands that maybe are uniquely formatted for a particular client or you are uniquely formatted and, and it's uh, for the process that you want to pull. So give it a second while this thing runs here and see what this thing spits out for us. All right, there we go. It populated for us there. And as you can see, there we go. We got our command uh, back. We just ran a simple command, got the same thing. Um, so let's move over to our PowerShell script. Uh, here's where we run scripts. Same deal. Uh, scripts are sitting over here in this column waiting for you to load them. When you load them, they load up here in your scripts window. All right. So you can make alterations to your script at this point in time or leave it alone. And then if you need to pass it parameters, like uh, maybe it had, uh, in ours, it had a URL location. So we had to pass it URL. We might do dash uh, URL space HTTP you know, colon whack my URL dot com. Right. And so maybe we would need to pass a, a, a parameter to like that to the script, we could do that here uh, by adding it to the optional parameters. Uh, if you need to do more, you could do that. You could do like user, you know, X, X, Z, and then pass uh, uh, QWE. So you, I mean, it's, depending on what you needed to do and how your, your scripts were built, uh, you could pass optional parameters here. Uh, otherwise, uh, in this one, we didn't have a parameter. It was just a basic run script, so we could just execute it at this point. And what it does is it packages this up, sends it down to the system as a script, and then it executes the script command. As you can see here, we had no parameter, so it didn't add any parameters to the end of it. And executing script says execution went okay. Voila. So we have a valid script went down, and we should now have uh this guy here is sitting uh at our at our location uh to verify this we could just go to browser uh file explorer there we go we know that this is where we put it so let's go see windows Uh, do, 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 LT services. Uh, Pureform, yeah, we have Pureform directory, awesome. CC install directory, we sure do, absolutely. And there's our CC setup, ve.msi, which is exactly what we have right here. So it went and made sure this directory was created and went and created the directory. Then it downloaded this file from this location and placed it there for us. So we now have a downloaded file on the local system due to the fact that we were able to run a nice PowerShell script to do so. Uh, that's how that works. Uh, you're able to now distribute PowerShell scripts uh, to your to your uh, your lower end admins. Let them run those scripts. Uh, same thing with PowerShell commands, or you can do one off. If you want to create a script, you got one. You can just copy and paste that script right into this window here at any time and execute that script. Uh, make sure that it, it again it follows along with double quoting uh, any paths that you have where you have a path like this. Make sure that you do uh, double quotes to escape it. So it might be instead of doing double quote, this is my file. Double quote. You will do uh, double quote. Double quote. Double quote. Double quote. Like that. That will. Uh, uh, escape those uh, there or if you don't want to do that at all just do single quotes where you can 
and you shouldn't run into any major problems. Keep that in mind. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy and let us know if you have any problems. Visit us at pluginsforlabtech.com. Uh, we do have uh, uh, support at support pluginsforlabtech.com. Come in here. We have our forums. You can find forums for our PowerShell plugin down here. Uh, all our plugins have their own forums. If you have any problems, feel free to post on the forums, uh, and we'll be more than happy to assist you in any way we can. Enjoy the free plugins. Have a nice day.